Hi, Steve here, and welcome to part 2A in my series on the Modo 701 particle system. This video will concentrate on the settings in the particle simulation itself. If you watched the first video in this series, you will remember the lawn sprinkler example. This is where I must admit to some sleight of hand. To obtain the effect that I demonstrated, I did have to modify some of the settings in the particle simulation. This is what it should have looked like. For one thing, there is no gravity. Less obvious, perhaps, is that the particles are not being culled according to their age. The effect is quite pleasing, but it's not what I wanted. Let's address the latter problem first. I'll select the particle simulation and then introduce a form of dusticide, if you like, by checking the cull by age box. The maximum age now controls when particles meet their maker and shuffle off their mortal coil. Let's run the simulation. Reducing the maximum age terminates the particle sooner, increasing it, and they last longer. This is an improvement, but the edge where the particles die is rather abrupt. The particles in this system all have similar velocities and so they all die at a similar point. To misquote Gandalf, some that live deserve death and some that die deserve life. Can you give it to them, Modo? It turns out that in the case of Modo, the answer is yes we can. This is where the extended age parameter comes into play. We can allow some particles some extra grace to live and remain on this earth by increasing this value. The effect is random and so some particles get a lucky break whilst others die when they would have done anyway. Let's adjust the extended age parameter. should now see that the edge where they die is now rather more diffuse and gentle and not as abrupt as it was before. Let's stop the simulation. Incidentally, you can stop simulation simply by pressing spacebar, which is usually a lot quicker than having to move down to the bottom of the screen for the stop button. And whilst I'm talking about shortcuts, if you're wanting to select a bunch of items from the schematic view, just click in the schematic and drag the mouse over the items you want to select and they will be multi-selected. The Modo particle system is, as Brad Peebler would probably say, fully integrated with the dynamic system. This means that particles can be affected by all the standard forces in the dynamic system. However, some forces are so common that they are built into the particle system directly. This is a convenience and not logically necessary, but I guess it may also be more efficient to have them burnt in in this way. To add gravity to the simulation, use the Use Gravity checkbox. Oh dear, my lawn sprinkler seems to be on a black hole. I didn't know that there were lawn sprinklers on black holes. The gravity force is too strong. This can be remedied by adjusting the gravity or by changing the initial velocities of the particles. It's easier to change the gravity as this affects all the particles in one fell swoop.
This is beginning to look a lot more like a garden sprinkler. The other built-in force is drag. Drag acts in the opposite direction to the velocity of each particle, and so its effect is to slow them down. Increasing the drag makes the system look even better, I think, but the particles are not getting very far now. This time I think I need to increase their initial velocity somewhat to get the effect I'm looking for. There, I think I'm about done with this example. You may have noticed that I haven't talked about the steps channel. This is because you don't often need to change this setting. Increasing it will also increase the cost of running the simulation, but will also increase its accuracy by performing more calculations for each frame. This setting is useful when you have very fast moving particles which might otherwise miss collisions with thin objects. The preview section of the simulation relates to the display properties of particles. These settings have no effect on behaviour, but they can help you to see what's going on. In this example we have two sets of particles, a set of relatively fast moving particles and a set of relatively slow moving ones, but it's not so obvious which particles belong to which emitter. I can change the colour of the particles being emitted into the first simulation and similarly into the second simulation. Now we can see which particles are which but they could also do with being a bit bigger, so let's do that. We can also control the visibility or otherwise of each of the simulations. Finally, the stored features flags control the data that is available downstream of the particle system. These are the values that can be used to control rendering, so I will cover them in more detail in a later video. That's it for part 2a. Thanks for watching and see you in part 2b.